Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk. 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 And it's number those? 85. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> 85 wow. tech more information than you could possibly shove in your brain in a lifetime but somehow we've been able to do it over 85 shows and and occasionally we answer the same question after <laughs> yeah more than, but more than two one years show. later yeah exactly <laughs> if you got a question for us throw it in the chat room right now whether you're watching on facebook live or whether you're watching on youtube or you know from some satellite dish from somewhere um, you know you know whether it's coming off the the web telescope <laughs> throw it in the chat room i don't know if the web telescope has a chat room but well, it probably does you know it's probably, <laughs> it probably has does. Own youtube channel yeah. anyway it's voice over body shop <laughs> tech talk right now <laughs> VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect, JNC Demos, when quality matters. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop, or VO. B S tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech, tech talk. talk. We are talking tech here on voiceover body shop. And there's a reason that George and I talk tech because guess what? That's what we do. Now it I'm is. a full-time voice actor and you know, a full-time president of world voices and full-time husband and <laughs> <laughs> you know, dog owner and things like things like that. But we, I also do voiceover uh, technical uh, consulting, as does George, uh, because it seems now as there's more people in the business, some people are starting to get it. Yeah, but it's still a mystery to people trying to get into this business. And I do start think, hearing the things we've been saying the last eleven years starting to echo around the right. web in, in different forums and. And right. chat rooms. So where do they get is, this stuff from? It is getting around. <laughs> they got it from you and me. I mean, it's, yeah. we've, we've been figuring it out. You know, there, there are people that are experts in, you know, maybe they helped somebody build a studio or they built their own, found yeah. out how they did what they did wrong. Mm -hmm. And then like, oh, I ha I got to fix that. So they'll go to about 20 different YouTube videos, to try and figure it out. Right. Yeah. Or you could just work with one of us. Because we know how to do it. We've seen everything. I've, I've, I've put in studios in, you know, uh, tile laden apartments in Cairo, uh, <laughs> <laughs> tiny little places in Paris. Uh, every, every room is different. Every voice is different. Every situation is different. And it really takes somebody who knows what it's supposed to sound like mm -hmm. Whistle. To, help, to help you get it sounding the way it's supposed to sound like. And if you would like to work with us, you can work with either one of us. You can start by with George. If you want to work with him, you would just go over to George, the dot tech. That's my place on the web. And I I've got a big library of content on there. That's totally free. By the way, there's a huge free resources area. You can start dabbling around, read the blog and see what's going on over there. That will keep you busy for probably three or four months. Then when you're tired of that, you can <laughs> you can actually book actual time with me on, on the website there. We can work one-on-one, -on -one, or you can just send an audio sample for a sound check. Dan does sound checks, but he's got a funny name for him over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah, the, the, uh, the specimen collection cop is now at the top of the page. So when you go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com, it's right there, $25.00. I will analyze your audio to see if it's up to snuff. Does it sound what it's supposed to sound like? And if it doesn't, I will tell you exactly what, what's going on with it. You know, it's I will, the single most valuable 
service either of us provide. Absolutely. Especially for the money. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. If you're going to find out if, if your, your sound is competitive and I will go through the acoustics of the room. Are you using your microphone properly? Uh, are you setting your levels? Mm -hmm. George, are you still amazed at how people just don't get the level setting thing yet? Yeah. 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 I still get files all the time where it's maybe taking up a less than a quarter of the, of the possible dynamic range, you know, and, um, yep. It's something that needs to be dealt with a lot, but that's, that's why we're, that's why we still have businesses, Dan. That's why we <laughs> still have jobs. God. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never be able to replace us with a computer. That's for darn sure. <laughs> Anyway, I hope not. you've got lots of stuff going on in your tech update this week. And ah. I see something familiar on the top there. Do tell. I did. Um, as usual, I was scraping the internet to find something that's <laughs> That's what new. that scraping sound was earlier. Right? Yeah. I'm scraping the internet, trying to find something that's new, that's actually somewhat relevant. And it seems like a lot of the time, things that are new, that are relevant, and that aren't crazy expensive, tend to be audio interfaces. And... This would not be an exception. So the classic, now what I consider classic, has probably been around seven, eight years. The Yamaha AG03 Mark II is available. So they made improvements to it? What did they do? I mean, I, I took a while to figure it out. And I it, there's probably some that you don't really know about because they don't really list. I think because the AG03 isn't really like really marketed as a pro audio device. They don't really go into the minutia of like the THD, the total harmonic distortion and all the different little minutia of the specs. So there might be some improvements there, but the things that I saw that were the most acute that were obvious anyway, um, is that they've added a mute button. Now I know that doesn't sound like that big a deal, but there wasn't one before. So it's really nice that you can cut the mic with the press of a button. Right. right. It's important to cut your mic at time, you know. And when you need to cut it, you know why. You know why you want to cut the mic. You want to make sure it really is off and it has a proper mute button. It also, they added a, um, alongside Bluetooth, which obviously is also new, Yeah. Um, they added a TRRS phone connection. So that one cable connection that would go between your AG03 mixer with your smartphone that has a headset jack, if you happen to have good, one of those relics. Yeah, they're, they're like well, ancient history now. Yeah, thanks to Apple. Um, or you have the the little dongle that will plug into your, your phone that gives you a, a headset jack. Or that could also plug into the headset jack that's on a, all the new uh, modern PCs and laptops. They all have a headset jack. You can just plug one cable in and have a secondary connection just for Zoom and phone patch type situation so it's nice that they've integrated that it was already good and now it's even better and um it's going to continue to be on my short list it's going to re actually this is going to make it probably get it back onto my short list because it was getting a little long in the tooth um so it's nice to see a reboot and um i would love to get one and do some real world tests and see if it's cleaner has lower noise and if everything works just as well as the last yeah um now, kind of tying into that is this notion of firmware or not to firmware. And what does all this mean? One thing I love about the AG03 is that it is this, like, I always use the word Goldilocks, the term Goldilocks. <laughs> it's just right. It's this just right balance between a physical interface with knobs, buttons, switches, things Sliders. that you can physically manipulate. Right. Yeah. A switch for loopback? That's unheard of. Nobody has a physical switch that will just turn on the loopback when you need it. I love that the AG03 does this. It's really, really unique. But at the so, so it's mostly driven in software, or, or I'm sorry, actual hardware, right? But the thing that's cool about it is it doesn't need an external control panel software to just work it just plugs in and play it's plug and play right works like your standard if you think of it a scarlet 2i2 or something but then it has the secret on the secret level you can unlock and then it has onboard processing so um that i'm definitely looking forward to seeing what's new in the processing side of the og of the uh, ag03 mark ii but it has the ability to have like a little bit of an eq if you need it 
uh, a high pass filter that you can fine tune. That really makes it stand alone um, in a device like this. And again, it's not there if you don't need it. You don't have to turn it on. You don't have to even know how to work it. It just disappears if you don't need it. I love that about that. Yeah, I, I like to. I I, ha, I had one, and then I I broke the headphone jack on it, so I moved on to something else. It's it wasn't like, built like a tank. No, it wasn't. But it, it was built, great yeah. with the the DSP program in it. You know, the fact that you could you run it. It was like they were they were uh, uh, proprietary plugins yeah. for for this particular unit. Right, and it had compression on it, as you were saying. You know, and an EQ. I am sure since it's been about six or seven years since they first came out with it, they have improved the DSP uh, software on there. Got to so imagine. Probably, yeah. So yeah. now we got to go out and buy one and check it <laughs> I out. I know. Another one to buy. Well, I also like that it's just, it also has a physical on off button right. to turn those things on and off. I, I, that just, I love devices that have a quick grab a knob, press a button adjustment. It, you don't have to have an iPad running all like okay i'll show you i all right and i'm going to talk about it i love my personas revelator i i think it's the best i really do love it and right now these things are 150 bucks but to really get the most out of it you have to have this thing running on an ipad or running on your screen so now you've got this other whole user interface going on to that's a companion to the interface to the device itself and that's a pro if you are a pro producer <laughs> or a streamer. Um, it's a con if you're just an actor who wants to just to be able to do voice acting and keeping it simple. Because while there is a knob on the front, it's not doing just one job. It's doing five. It's a gain knob, a mix knob, a headphone level, and a um, speaker level knob. It's gain for two different mics. So really it does five different distinctly different jobs. That's a lot to keep track of in real time. And this is where I'm going. Uh, I went on a little tangent, but the firmware and not firmware, some audio interfaces don't require a software control panel layer to get them to do what they need to do, right? And I love that about that. I love that about the SSL2. I love that every knob in, is just right there. Every feature has one button that it does its job. I love that with the AG03 that it has just one knob and switch to do everything unless you unlock its secret level, you know, of capability. Um, and that's what makes the Revelator capable, but also a little intimidating. More capable because of the firmware, the ability to do and configure many different things that you can't see from the front panel. But that learning curve and that fear, is it going to work the way it did last time I plugged it in? And how many menus do I have to get into? That's a whole different animal, and I tend to be very careful about who I recommend interfaces for or two based on those two criteria. Do you like one knob or one switch or one button for every feature, or do you really want to be able to have more powerful capabilities? And that's, that's kind of the difference between those two types. Yeah. With, with great power comes great responsibility. Oh, I though. say this all the time, Dan, <laughs> especially all you guys with Apollos and stuff. And I'm like, yes, with great power. <laughs> if, you, if you're using Reaper, oh my goodness, with great power. That, that is a very complex, elaborate recording software. You really need a lot of training to get the most out of it. In another piece of news, I mentioned the Apollo briefly. As you guys know, I've been setting up and tuning Apollo systems for so, so long, but I created a Facebook group just for voiceover. I wanted a voiceover group for the Apollo. Well, there's so many groups on Facebook that manage, that deal with the Apollo stuff from Universal Audio, and it was starting to wane in its activity. It was kind of whittle, withering away, I should say. And I also, it really bugged me that all that intellectual property, all those searches, all those discussions, all that stuff is locked away in the Facebook silo. You can't get to it outside of Facebook. So finally, we're going to have a place in the uadforum.com just for us in voiceover, live streaming, and podcasting. All of us that use Apollos for non-music purposes, there's going to be a home for us. And I'm going to be the admin and I'll be able to get more folks in there as mods. And it's, I'm, really really glad about it because folks that are using that hardware need a good place to go to get help and 
they're not going to be able to necessarily get me in the clutch. They might need some real fast help, and there's going to be a community of people there to answer questions. So I know it's ironic, right? How many times did Dan and I say, don't get tech support by committee? Right. We, it's, it's, I get that this is throws in the face of it, but the bottom line is there's still a very good use case for communities and forums and places for people to commiserate, share ideas and just, you know, kvetch. Did I use that word right? Kvetch. Fetch. Kvetch. There's a V in it. K-V-E-T-C-H. That means to Kvetch. bitch. That means to bitch, right? Yes. To complain. <laughs> At least that's what my mom would say. The safe so. place to complain about the stuff you're, you're using without other people going, well, you shouldn't have used that in the first place. You know, it's like nobody wants to hear that. Anyway, so stay tuned. Uh, hopefully by the time this actually is aired in a week, that will have finally uh, gone live. So fingers cool. crossed. So Dan, we're going to talk about some acoustic stuff, huh? Yeah. You know, I, we get this all the time because we are constantly talking to people about their home studios, uh, especially a lot of people who are beginning. Mm -hmm. And here, here's a common phrase that someone will send me. They'll say, okay, I have a closet and I'm going to try and seal it up and make sure that I put a lot of soundproof foam in it. And I'm <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. There is a difference between... That's like sound a waterproof screen door. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Between sound treatment and soundproofing. <laughs> there are two things you are trying to accomplish. Anybody that's ever worked with me knows uh, the first thing I lead off with is the most important thing in your home voiceover studio is the acoustical properties of the studio. And that consists of two things. Even though I say, you know, there are three things that you got to get right. Part one has part A and part B. Part A is preventing exterior noise from coming into the area in which you record. That is not easy. In a home voiceover studio, if you are using a closet or are just in a room that uh, it is literally impossible to get your noise floor down, you know, like minus 70 uh, without some assistance, you, you've got air conditioners, furnaces, neighbors, garbage disposals, toilets, all sorts of things that can go on in your place of residence, whether it's a house or an apartment. You got a highway next door. You have helicopters, you know, going overhead. You know, I had, you know, four uh, ospreys going over at 10,000 feet yesterday. And the studio, you know, this is a soundproof studio. It's, you could still hear it. It's just like the cavitation of those big rotors, you know. So you want to be able to prevent exterior noise from reaching the inside. It doesn't take a whole lot. If you're in a closet and you seal yourself up in the closet, uh, it will, if you can reduce the exterior noise by 7 to 10 dB, that's generally enough to make the space usable. Uh, now, you can get a soundproof booth. Uh, as I like to say, you know, if, if, you're, if you have trouble with, you know, neighbors or the, the yard, you know, the, the gardeners coming in and using a leaf blower, you could spend six or $7,000 on a new booth. Or you could wait until they stop blowing leaves around. It, you know, it's, it's a pretty easy equation. But foam is not going to do anything about preventing that. Uh, the way you soundproof something is with mass uh, and density. Uh, you know, using something like uh, uh, vinyl, you know, uh, mass-loaded vinyl or uh, <laughs> concrete blocks or using what we call decoupled construction to so that the, the booth will actually move with the sound and absorb it and not let it go through. And or all of the above. Or all of the <laughs> if above. If you really yeah. need it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if, if, if you are an established voice talent and you, and you really need to have that silence, yeah, you might need a booth, but you don't buy the booth until you're actually there. Uh, you don't buy a booth to say, I'm going to be a voice actor. I'm going to buy a $10,000 booth. It, not a good idea. It's not a great investment until you understand specifically what you're doing and how to become a great voice actor, which takes, it's not going to happen overnight. 
So yeah. you you can you can buy a booth and that will prevent exterior noise. But you don't have to get necessarily get in a really expensive booth, just something that you know, if you build one yourself, if you can get a lot of that exterior noise out, that will help a whole lot. But part two of part one is or part B, I think is the best way to put it, is acoustical treatment. What is it you're trying to accomplish inside the space in which you're recording? Uh, most importantly, you don't want it to be reflective. And that means sounding like you're in a tube, you're talking into a box, you're in a cave. Uh, and there's a number of things that can happen there. You, you know, you get bass reflex. Bass reflex is that sound of over over modulated uh, uh, lower frequencies. Uh, if you happen to have a very deep voice, uh, one of my favorite. I had one last week. Somebody had a ringing noise in their booth, and I'm like, you'll have like a, a bell shaped uh, lamp in there or something like that's made. Of, no, I don't think so. I'm like, if you over project, you you can hear the ringing. Something metal in there is vibrating at a, just the right frequency of your voice. And it's coming back as a ringing sound. Uh, you've got to, it's got to be, you know, some people say it's got to be dead. I mean, not necessarily dead, dead. It has to sound like you're in a room, you know, but you are not that far from the mic, you know, and you know, mic technique is an important piece of it. But if you're at the right distance from the mic and you're not over projecting, it should sound like, just your voice. There shouldn't be any what we call slapback. There shouldn't be any echo. There shouldn't be any bass reflex. There are ways to fix that using acoustical foam, bass traps, things along those lines. But there's only one way to determine if you need that. And that's to talk to Mr. Witterman myself and send us a sample so we can hear it. And we can say, okay, there is something going on. There. And it takes five seconds for us to listen to this stuff. We're, we're, it, this is the kind of thing that you can't plug it into a computer formula. You and, right. and trust us, hiring a very fancy, expensive acoustician company ain't going to help you either because they generally don't know how to tune acoustically these really weird little spaces that we all work in. They, I've talked to a lot <laughs> of them. They don't know. A lot of this is a little bit of a black art. It's not like it's difficult to do, it's just that the knowledge isn't that common among even the industry. So we're going to get you the right, inf right advice. You, you mean you, we're practitioners of black art? <laughs> you would think so. You would think so by the <laughs> lack of books, the lack of chapters, the lack of topics. In all of the acoustic books that I keep wasting my money on, <laughs> because <laughs> they never ever uh, talk about the subject of a small ISO booth and acoustically tuning it. So yeah, that's I what mean, we do. When, when, when you hear something that's not going on, that doesn't sound right. Like if there's a node or something like that, how do you approach it? What, how do you find where to fix it? Uh, yeah, I, well, there's one way you can actually look up something that well, I was just saying a second ago that there's no, there's no computer calculators there. There actually is something called a room mode calculator. That will give you a little bit of information. It's going to tell you the frequencies at which that room will naturally resonate. Just like a bell has a specific frequency that it rings, a booth will have, well, unfortunately, not just one, but at least three <laughs> frequencies <laughs> based on the dimensions, length, width, and height uh, that it's going to ring. So we do have some ways to kind of predict, oh, you're going to have some real problems at 125 hertz you know so that means those two inch panels they sure look good they sure look like they're gonna do it but they're just not gonna do it we know we need to get thicker panels now we gotta go to four inch panels right so um that's the kind of thing that i will look for and also listen for it also depends on the kind of mic you're using it depends on how close it is it depends where the mic is inside the space I know, Dan, you've talked about that. Like, you've moved them like this way, that way, up, down, until right. you find this sweet spot in there where it doesn't seem to hear that ringing and resonance anymore. Yeah. It's all so, part of yeah, one, one of the cool things you can do if you're in a booth or even in, in a closet full of clothes or something like that is listen at different levels, you know, whether you're sitting or standing or halfway or leaning or something along yeah. those lines. It's fascinating 
how the level of where your voice is at in that particular space, how it will resonate back. And mm -hmm. that's how you find the sweet spot, at least height wise. And then where is the best place to, you know, to put the microphone inside that space. Yep. Yep. So, you know, but it, it, it back to the, the thing about, uh, about acoustics, you know, one of the things that I look for, because I don't want people spending a lot of money when they're starting out, you know, yeah. they, they try something that's simple. If you have a really, really quiet room, uh, usually I will suggest something like a PVC booth, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like four corners or, or the, uh, the, the tri booth that, uh, that Rick Wasserman and yourself had designed. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it, it will work in a quiet room. If they're, if you're already well isolated from exterior noise, like if there's no exterior walls, which is great about a closet, that's an interior closet because the rest of the house or the apartment will, will prevent some of that noise coming through. Yeah. But if you have a quiet room, you can use a, a, a PVC pipe booth with moving blankets on it or some higher quality sound yep. absorbing blankets like, uh, like audio mute or uh, producer's choice or something mm -hmm. along those lines. Those work great if you have a quiet room and that will create a very, very quiet space uh, and a yeah. very non-reflective space. Yeah, free of and, bouncing and reflection. Right. And that's what you want. And that's the kind of thing that you want to prevent is that reflection. You know, the noise, you know, I mean, if you got a fan going somewhere, I mean, you know, I can, I, I can mute my mic and it's going to get rid of the, or I could turn the air conditioning off. It's or amazing. You can, or you can get a really, really small fan like this one. I can hear that. I'm turning the air conditioning back on because it's <laughs> 92 degrees out there. It warms yeah, up this, this little quick. fan on, on the one setting, it's not that it's completely dead silent, but it is quiet enough that you could probably do a lot of things with a little breeze and it just, that all that makes all the difference. All right. Well, we're going to get to some questions. Hey, you got plenty of time to get your questions about your home voiceover studio or something that you've always wanted to know, but we're afraid to ask because we weren't there with you. But now we are. Or some so new if you hear you heard about uh, what's yeah, our some, some new kind of thing or new mic or something along those lines. You want us to talk about it? Throw it in the chat room. I know Jeff Holman is still in there taking down those questions, watching all your comments in Facebook and on YouTube, and we will get to them right after these important messages. So don't go away. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. Inflated prices? Not at VoiceOverEssentials.com. Despite the nationwide inflation rate of over 8%, VoiceOver Essentials refuses to raise prices. In fact, they refuse to even say the I word. Their inventory is large on all their products, and they purchase them before the current economic conditions. It's simply wrong to increase profit, as many retailers are doing right now. So Harlan and company promise not to raise their prices during difficult times for everyone. They'll stay the course, steady and sure, flat and firm, solid and steadfast. Okay, enough. You get the point. Unfortunately, they're under the same inflationary pressures as everyone else, and they'll need to restock in the not-so-distant future. No doubt, there'll be sticker shock for them and you. So, right now is the time to order that Portabooth Pro or VO1A voiceover microphone and their VO2.0 headphones. Fight inflation at voiceoveressentials.com. Hey, everybody. Let's talk about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. And the winners of the uh, Best Service Provider for VoiceOver Award at the One Voice Conference. Um, Congratulations, you guys. Obviously, you deserve it. Clearly, you're making a product that is well well loved by the users out there that have to rely on it to produce voiceover recordings remotely, which is almost everything, right? Almost everything is being done remotely. And Source Connect facilitates that in a way that producers really enjoy. And the reason is, is because when that session is in their underway, it's as close to the actor as being in the room or in the booth at the facility as they're going to get because that sound quality is extremely high. It's consistent. And the latency 
believe it or not, can be controlled to be very low if you've got great internet connections. And many of us do now with fiber and a good hardwired network connection, you can really get very low latency on Source Connect. And they love that. It, it makes communication easier and it makes consistent production happen on the fly. When the session's over, Source, <laughs> when the session's over, actors love it because when that session's over, you're done. You're not editing, you're not trimming the files, you're not processing, you're not sending. It's done when it's done. So that's what's so great about Source Connect. If you feel like it's time for you, you're hearing more buzzes about it, your agent, maybe you have an agent, says it's time, go over and get a free trial at source-elements.com and get started on it right away so you can feel comfortable when that real session comes. Anyway, thanks for listening. More spots, and then we'll be back for your questions right after this. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing, and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values. A leader for California and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Before time began, there was vobs.tv. Watch or else. And we're back here at VOBS Tech Talk. And uh, we love your questions. Still lots of room in the, the queue for a couple more questions as well uh, from you guys about home voiceover studios, because that's what we like to talk about. I mean, when George and I get together, you know, aside from some of the personal crap, we talk about tech and, you know, <laughs> what, yeah. what, what did you, I, I got to tell you about this client I had. I won't mention any names, but, you know, they had this or they had that. And, you know, which is why we have very similar philosophies on how to <laughs> fix these things and getting things sounding right. Yep. We know so, that we, we know it works. We've, 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 we've definitely kind of started to figure out what works, what doesn't. And it rarely does it differentiate dif differ much between Dan and I. Yeah. No, because I'm older. I've, I have more experience at life. You have more experience than tech. So we combine the two and it's like, yeah. come on, be logical. Anyway, <laughs> Uh, Jeff Holman asks, George, is the, the VOBS discount still in force? What's the coupon code over at, uh, over at George the dot. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's the, there's the VOBS fan 10 code that gives you 10% off. And from past episodes, if you watch the end of the show, you'll see my prior discount codes, which are still also inactive, active. Those codes will still be active until the end of the year. Um, so, uh, but the current one is VOBS fan 10. Right. Um, and then a second part, uh, what is the best mic to use for on camera videos, like a self tape? I'm using my iPhone 12 pro max as my camera. Dan's holding it in his hand. This is a great little mic. This is the go to, or what it's, what's yeah, it called? Yeah, I think it's the Rode video go, mic, go video to? mic, go to. We used this last week when we were doing the, uh, the interview at the Mojave at Mojave microphones. And it right. worked great. It did. We, we, it was, it was really run and gun. We just plugged it in with that special cable. There is a cable that you want to buy that will directly interface the USB yeah, to slightly, your iPhone. Slightly different than the, the regular iPhone lightning cable. But, but man, we just plugged it right in. I'm like, we Plug didn't even go. test it. And suddenly Plug it was working. Go. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It was definitely easy. We, for self tapes, definitely keep it simple. I've heard of some pretty elaborate setups people are saddling themselves with. Do don't go there. Keep it keep it authentic. Keep it real. Make sure they can see you and hear you, but it doesn't have to sound like a studio. You know, don't, yeah. don't overdo it. Yeah, but you know, I mean, there's 
you know, if you, if you use a shotgun mic, I mean, a, a 416 or any other, you know, shotgun mic along those lines works great, but you still have to have an interface with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, filming with your, your iPhone, uh, which as far as I'm concerned, is probably one of the best cameras. Out it's there. the best cameras most anybody has in their house at this point is, is the fi- iPhone camera. Right. <laughs> it's for sure. I mean, it's, it's a big improvement over you know, one of these guys. I mean, this thing was charged five years ago and it still works, which is actually pretty amazing. You know, it's uh, crazy. Like I see like cameras, I see photos now, all these bike races I'm in, people come and they're nice enough to share the photos they take and they're taking them with big expensive cameras with long lenses and all this stuff. Almost never do their photographs look as good as a lot of the iPhone photos that I've taken because there's a lot more to taking a picture than just squeezing the trigger. Um, and what iPhones are doing is a lot of computational photography. That's why the color balance is great. The exposure is great. Most of the time, the focus is dead on. There's a huge amount of processing that's happening the second you take that photo and that all those other cameras require you to do all that in post. And a lot of people don't bother. So yeah, it's much, much easier to get great sounding video and audio from an iPhone than almost any pro camera that's for sure yeah uh question from terry briska this is a very interesting question it's a tech question good because it's tech talk uh, <laughs> i will be doing my first demo outside of my own studio which is probably mm. pretty good should i take my home studio mic to record on or use the studio's mic which is going to be most likely a 416 uh when i myself record on an mke 600 my concern is being able to reproduce what I'm putting on the demo. Oh, good question. It's, it's a good question. And I think it's one of those, you're way overthinking it questions. Um, one chances are ask the studio if they have an MKE 600 because, you know, recording studios, you know, it's not like they have one mic, they have what they call a mic locker and they have lots of different microphones for lots of different things, especially if it's a, a regular recording studio that, that, you know, records bands or orchestras or, and it, they've got a whole line of different types of microphones and we'll set it up the way you use it. Just ask them. I, I think that that's pretty simple. So there's no need to like yank your st- mic out of your own studio to do that. Now, is it going to be a big difference? I find Now, George, you can argue with me about this or you can like, you know, Dan, you're absolutely right. The sound you have is the sound you have. And are you going to sound better on one mic versus another? When you're making a demo, it's recording your voice and it's capturing you as you exist. And if you have a good demo producer, they're going to, they're going to do all sorts of things to it to make it sound like it's a demo, like it's real. They'll add compression and EQ so it will be consistent across the board. Now, if you book a gig off that demo and you're using your MKE 600, it's not going to really matter. It's what they're really looking for is, are you interpreting the copy the way the author and the advertiser or whoever wants it done? If it doesn't sound like garbage, then you'll be, then you'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, if you, I wouldn't worry about what mic the demo is recording on because the demo is going to be produced. The audio you're sending out for auditions shouldn't be produced. Like if you're trying to sound just like you did on that demo, it's not going to make sense in the context of an audition. It's going to sound overproduced. It's going to sound too loud, too shiny, too bright, too whatever. And um, so it's not a bad idea. I think your heart is in the right place. It's definitely more about can you act and on, can you be directed to get that performance that you've done on the demo? Not so much about can you reproduce the recording quality, I think of what's on that demo. So it's a good question. Plus the MK 600 is a shotgun and it sounds a lot like a 416. So yeah, I think Dan, Dan nailed it. I would say I would agree completely. The second, second question is about the update to Isotope RX 10. Um, have you tried it yet? Well, no, nobody's tried it yet because unless you're not out Don yet. Barnes who <laughs> helps develop their software. Um, no, you're not, uh, we're not going to have it yet. I just, I just looked online and they're saying it's so, it's so early 
that uh, we're not even sure what they're actually going to be doing to make our RX-10 newer or better or whatever. So, sorry, it's a little early, um, maybe in a month from now or so. I'm not sure the release date, but they release always in the fall, I think. Um, maybe we'll have had a chance. I, I know that when from eight, RX-8 to RX-9, there was basically no marked improvement for a voiceover actor. I wonder what they changed then. There was little that had anything to do with what voice actors need. The mouth to click was the same. Right. The voice to noise was the same. The 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 chains and all that stuff worked the same. Seven to eight, there was a big improvement because chains could be imported and uh, effects chains could be made and imported easily. And they did make some real improvements under the under the hood. But I don't know what they're going to do in ten if they have a perfect D reverb or something that will change the acoustic character of your recording space convincingly, uh, or get Good rid of luck. your booth sound. Um, okay. You'll, you'll, you'll have my attention. Yeah. They certainly got waves, uh, clarity VX, which is this crazy noise reduction plugin, uh, to, uh, to compete against. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, if you've got Adobe Audition, you don't really need RX-7. RX-7 was really designed, I think, initially to fix vinyl records. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, like restoring old, audio from restore, bad recordings right. from, you know, 20, 50, 80 years ago. Yeah. Right. So if your studio, and the fact of the matter is, even if you're recording in, you know, somewhat of a, 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 a marginal space, uh, you don't want to, like, you know, use a hand grenade to, to fix it. Uh, you know, it's, it's RX seven or RX, you know, the isotope stuff. It's fabulous. It really is amazing stuff. But you know, my philosophy is everything is physical. If you get it right physically up front, you don't necessarily need that kind of stuff, but it's good to have, and it's fun to have around and, and, and it's good. It will help you learn a little bit more about audio. Uh, a D reverb would be really great. But of course, if you're recording in a really reflective space, I would suggest a different space, you know, yeah. in podcasting and stuff like that. You know, it's like those tools are really designed for fixing interview audio and things where it's really critical to be able to hear the other person. But for single voiceover stuff, I tend to think it's a bit of overkill. Not to say that it's a bad program. It's amazing technology. And if you yeah. know how to use it and you know how to use it subtly and seamlessly, I think that's a good way to go mm -hmm. you get the question from jonathan grant uh he says hey jeff <laughs> george and dan's preferred filler for cloud panel uh oc 703 or mineral wool um so yeah what's the best acoustical liner to put into an acoustical cloud panel in the ceiling um oc well, oc 703 is a classic it's been used in tons and tons of studios to me, mineral wool is sort of the next evolution in terms of product because it's less toxic. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have the formaldehyde glue that bonds it together. So I, I tend to lean on mineral, mineral wool or rock wool rock is rock the wool. brand name, one of the brand names of it. There's others, but yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's what I use one. when I, when I build a cloud, you know, you just got to be careful with it because like fiberglass, it, it, it has tiny little microscopic things that will itch. So yeah, and it wear gloves, the air. Yep. yeah, or, or, you know, or an environmental suit or, you know, a painter's suit or something like that. When you're working with it to create the clouds, clouds are actually quite easy to build mm -hmm. and, uh, they can make a huge difference. Say if you're, if you've got a closet that you're recording in, that's too big or has really, really high by putting in a cloud, you are reducing the acoustical size of the room, not the actual physical size of the room but it will diffuse and absorb the sound that is above it. So you don't, you're not, you're not like, you know, reverbing like it's like a guitar. Yeah. Uh, it also which, gives you a bass trapping effect too, usually because you've created this gap above it where lower frequencies will tend to be collecting more often. And the panel can do a pretty effective job of controlling some of the bass too. Absolutely. Um, just make sure. Yeah. What Dan was saying that there's fibers in this stuff that can get into the air absolutely make sure there's no nothing left open so right. like if you've got a panel hanging from the ceiling with this stuff on top make sure you put it back a layer of fabric over the back to trap it inside you know oh, I, i've been using it, yeah i've been using weed block 
Oh yeah, which, which works really, really well. It's black, right? It's black. It's it's you know it's flexible, uh, you know, and it and it covers and it cheap. up you know, with the staple gun. And yeah, boom, and, and and it works really, really well. Cool. Uh, and I've been building those for people lately, and it makes a huge difference in uh, in, in closets and stuff really like does. that. Uh, Catherine Jade Jarvey asks, assuming I'm comfortable and able to perform as usual, is there such a thing as too small for a booth? <laughs> I'm, I'm immediately thinking of a very small booth of someone we both know very well, where you just sort of squeeze in there, but she makes it work. So what was that Lori Allen? It would have been the one. Yes. Um, well, I, I can say that because she no longer is in that tiny booth. Oh, good. <laughs> now she's in a larger closet. It's still a closet, but it's still, <laughs> she actually has elbow room finally. Uh, but, uh, I, I, yeah, that booth, I never thought it could sound good as as small as it was and narrow it was it was. And But sometimes just the right amount of paneling in the right places, you can get away with some very small spaces. You're just going to be uncomfortable in long recording sessions. Just There's no two ways about it. You're just not going to be comfortable. Yeah. You're going to run it. You're going to get warm or hot. You're going to use up, uh, well, you're, you're going to use up oxygen and worse, they're going to, actually expel too much carbon dioxide in there and it gets going to get really stuffy and and all this so yeah it's that's where they when things get too small it's really that's what just doors about. are for and you just this is yeah. this is the best ventilation system opening a door that. quickly will let the uh carbon dioxide out and the oxygen in and yeah exactly <laughs> that, that'll help but a small booth yeah it can work uh, we tend to like to think that you should probably have something, you know, at least three and a half by three and a half or four by four by whatever height reduced with a cloud. Um, you know, there's, you've, you've got to be able to, it's got to ha- breathe a little bit. Yeah. You know, the smaller the booth, the more, you know, the more complex it can be because yeah. you can't over project because it will bounce right back even yeah, even if yeah. you have a lot of treatment there and you can't move around like you can't physically gesticulate you can't work the microphone that much because you don't have that much space to work right. if the uh, if you're being directed and they say can you step back six inches from the mic and you're like i'm already against the wall you know <laughs> yeah they do get too small <laughs> Yeah, and and also, and, and my technique is different in a, in a small booth. I mean, we we've got these these rules. Uh, one is, you know, first off, if you're in a really tiny booth, just a fist fist away. If it's a good sized booth, you know, four by four, something like that, thumbs up. If you're in a slightly larger room or in a bigger room, you know, George, you developed the thing. It's like you've got to be farther away, so it's like fist thumbs up, mahalo. Yeah, those seem to be the three <laughs> different distance ranges that work. Like I'm in a bigger room, it's just an office, and I can get this far away, and it still sounds pretty present. You get a little bit of reflection, but it's still workable. So yeah, but that's most people can't get that too that far away from the mic without causing problems. Yep. Uh, Mike Max Goldberg asks, can you put a Mac Mini SSD in the booth to eliminate fan noise? The new Mac Minis... You know, I don't, I don't notice it. Yeah, I, Mac we're both, mini SSD. yeah. I mean, well, Booth. it's a Mac mini with an SSD. They all have SSDs. Oh yeah. That. They all have SSDs. Yeah. Every Mac mini has solid state drives and the M ones, maybe that's what you're thinking of. The new Silicon chip M ones, yeah, the M one or the M two are, they're not fanless, but they are really quiet, really, really quiet fans, like crazy quiet. Um, so it's, it's, I consider it almost fanless because it just, I've never, ever heard the fan from my M1. Have you, Dan, have you ever heard the I've fan never, noise I've, from I've, it? I've never listened. I mean, I mean, I'm, sometimes I might hear, there's a rumble somewhere and I'll it's like, is it under the desk? No. It, and it's coming from somewhere else other yeah. than my computer. Yeah. The, it's now, the MacBook quiet. Air, deadly mm-hmm. silent. There's not, not a no sound fan that comes all. out of there. No fan no at fan all. No fan at all. Yep. Right. So, uh, yeah, you can, you know, a, a Mac mini SSD, you know, with an SSD drive in it is you're not going to get the whirring sound of a, of a mechanical drive. But I'll tell you the older one though, the Intel yeah. from 2018 and older, you will hear the fan. Yeah. They're not silent. 
those fans do spin up quite a bit and they can be quite noisy. Um, an older Mac Mini can sound like just sort of like a hairdryer running constantly. Maybe not quite that loud, but just just like that. Because I have a 2011 in my uh, in my near the TV that I use as like a server and to watch old videos, home videos. And when that thing's on for a day or so, I just notice, what's that? Oh yeah, that Mac Mini is still on. It's just going shh all the time, <laughs> constantly. You know, so definitely not silent. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to. I, I've got all these Macs sitting around, you know. I mean, I've sold a couple of them, but now they're sitting around. You know, maybe the battery's dead on them or something. But if you can fix them, the great thing about Macs is you can just keep using them for all sorts of things, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, have 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 it playing video on Halloween in front of your house. <laughs> yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> Don't ask me why I thought of that, but <laughs> um, you get the question from Jonathan Grant. Yes. All right. Um, Jonathan says, I record in a desk chair, a bar stool, and a standing height, depending on what I'm reading. I have solid wall treatment at all heights, but wondering about uh, how to ensure tuning of the cloud for those different heights. Um, the worst case is always the closer you are to the ceiling, right? So if it sounds good when you're standing, it's going to sound great when you're seated. So I would not worry about tuning the cloud for seated position. I only find that it's a real concern uh, as you get closer and closer to the ceiling. That's been my experience. Dan, how about you? Wait, yeah, I just had this bizarre thought about how you could do this. And this is because I'm a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> Does it involve pulleys and ropes? Pulleys. And I it involves so. pulleys and cleats and stuff like that. If you can suspend it and have a cleat on the side and know the settings for those different things, you just raise it and lower it. It would be an interesting experiment, not something I've done, where I made an adjustable hanging height cloud and played around with it. So, interesting idea. It could be done if you're really motivated. And I know Jonathan Grant is because I've seen his studio. <laughs> his studio is really, really well designed. He's yeah. put a lot of thought I, I into it. All you have to do is go over to Ace Hardware, get some rope and some pulleys, and you can. You can. That's amazing what you can do. I'd, I've built lots of shades. You know, Roman shades and stuff like that. If you know, understand that technology, th that would be nothing. That would be an easy thing to do. But he I said, think, I'm, he's like, OMG, I'm designing that now to follow oh my God, no. sit stand desk. Cause I think he has an electric lift desk. So. <laughs> well, then, then make him attach the chair and raise that up that way. <laughs> That's anyway. awesome. Wow. Great questions, folks. That's, that's, that's the kind of stuff we like to get. And as you can see, George and I just love talking about it because yep. it's like, how would we do that? We love the crazy ideas we will come up with too. And then we just makes us scratch our head. Yeah. You know. Should it be done? Does it help? Would you bother? Can I tell us how it goes, over Jonathan? My head? <laughs> yeah. 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 We want to see goes. pictures when you yes, actually pictures, do that. Proof. Alrighty. Well, <laughs> another hour gone sort of, uh, again, if you have a question for us, uh, at any time you can write to us at the guys at V O B S dot TV. And, uh, and if you write to us, if you write your question down long before we record this show, it gets priority. It'll be number one in the queue. So, you know, but you can, and of course you can always, you know, be here live and ask your questions live. And that's the best part about it. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to tell you about what's coming up in just a minute. So don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I teach a curriculum called VO Heroes Pro, uh, close to 40 classes on voiceover performance, the business, the technology, the mindset. And with all those courses, I'm sure there are still things that I don't teach. And I'd love to know, if you wouldn't mind helping me out, what you'd like to learn. Is there something that has always puzzled you about our business or something you just don't know about or something that you, you wish you had a better take on? Go to voheroes.com slash survey. There's a one-question survey waiting for you, and that is, what would you like to know? I'd love to teach it. So voheroes.com slash survey. That's voheroes.com slash survey. Let me know what I can teach you. And I thank you. 
In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> yes, you are. Apparently we are. We're all okay. watching. <laughs> we can't avoid it because we're actually doing it. So we got to <laughs> watch it and pay attention to what's going on here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's amazing the things that can go on while this show is going on. And there's... Over the 11 years we've been doing the show, sometimes it's some of the strangest stuff, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, to give you an idea how long ago it was, you know, the wife is yelling upstairs when we were back in Buffalo, Jacob needs to go to bed. Can you stop your show? <laughs> <laughs> of course, he just had his 25th birthday. So to give you an idea how long ago that was. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, next week on this show, you're not going to be here. You're going to be flying off to some other place, i'm gonna be in london by the way so anybody watching this if you're in the london region and you'd like to say hi hit me up let's yeah. try to coordinate something i'm hey, uh, governor, you're gonna be here yeah i'm gonna try to find a <laughs> i'm sure there's pubs around i hear there's london has pubs uh <laughs> find a pub and maybe we can hang out a bit and have a wee chat over a wee chippy um, fish or and chips, pint. of course, or a pint. Yeah. I would love that. <laughs> um, so yeah, hit me up. Let me know. Uh, send an email to George at George the dot tech. If you are in the London area and maybe we can get together or better yet, maybe I could even come to your studio. Ooh. Let me know. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think we'll, we will be having a guest co-host and that, and I, it's, I have a plan. I think it's going to be somebody with lots of fun. It should be great. And George is going to be <laughs> so angry that he wasn't here. I me. know. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> anyway, we More need FOMO. to thank. <laughs> yes. We need to thank our amazing donors of the week, like Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Tom Pinto, Shelly Avellino, Greg Thomas, a Dr. Voice, Antland Productions. Yeah, I sent, I had a picture of me in front of the Arc de Triomphe. Wearing my Antland Productions uh, tie dye shirt, I sent that off to Uncle Roy. So he must have loved that. I'm sure he did. Martha uh, Khan, nine forty nine designs. Our good friend uh, Lee Penny. Yes, uh, Christopher Epperson, uh, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall and Sandra Manwiller. All righty. Hey, if you need help with your home studio, you've come to the right place. You can come to homevoiceoverstudio.com where you will find me and all the stuff that I have. Yep. Or you can go over to georgethe.tech. And if you want to check out the webinar I'm teaching on Twisted Wave coming up in September, um, you can sign up for that at slash webinars. And uh, there's a free raffle copter. Thing you can do to get a free raffle pass and of course i still do have working coupon codes the current one is vobs fan 10 for 10 percent off all righty uh we need to thank our sponsors for whom this show would not be possible and they've been with us all these years we really appreciate it harlan hogan's voiceover essentials voiceover extra source elements voheroes.com voiceactorwebsites.com jmc demos and worldvoices.org. Go over there. Check out what we do over there at World Voices. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman getting all those questions in there and being patient over in the chat room. We really appreciate that. Yeah. Our tech director, Sue Merlino. She just gets it done every week. Worthy. 
Yeah, no, we're not, actually. Uh, and Lee Penny, just for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Guys, voiceover is a very complex business. You know, you got to be able to perform. and You've got to understand the business of the business. And we don't want you to overthink your audio. The fact of the matter is, if you get it sounding right, if you got all the acoustics right, if you listen to what we tell you about getting it sounding right, it will sound good. And if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.